is a means of description used on panel boards, switch gears, wiring accessories, cables or wires, cable trays, trunking, ladders, etc. This identification often varies from projects to projects. <music>
whereby we have cladding. In this case, if the consultant requires that we place an identification for that particular conduit, then so be it, we have to provide. While we have GI is exposed, so do require identification to distinguish the different services. So for example, I may use a uh, green, in this case, which I have uh, mentioned here, green for lighting, for fire alarm, I'll use red, et cetera. So I'll take you to a, to a graphic where we have uh, different conduits, as you can see. I'll give an example, this first graphic where we have um, different colors which have been identified for this uh, GI conduit for a particular service. So you look at this other one at the middle and then the one at the side. So you look at this other graphic, you'll notice that we have different conduits. So it will, we will find it so difficult while we're carrying out maintenance to identify what service have been installed for that particular conduit, which is very important. So um, in this case, we'll be able to see just on the, on the labeling or the identification that have been provided. As you can see, we have different color codes which have been placed for different conduits. So based on that, we'll be able to identify this blue is for this service, this red is for this service, this yellow is for this service, and so on and so forth. So we will have all these different colors that have been labeled probably on um, our meta statements, which will uh, um, aid us or make us understand that this particular color code is for this particular service. So while we are carrying out maintain, uh, installation, installation um, inspection on site, we'll be able to identify that this labeling has been provided for this particular service and it conforms to what has been written on the meta statement, which is very important. So I'll take you to the next slide, which is cable tray trunking or ladder panel boards. We finished already for conduit works. For the conduits, like I did mention, we'll have different color codings, red, yellow, purple, orange, blue, and so on and so forth, or white as well. So all these different colors will be identified based on the different services that are installed in that particular location. And this should be submitted to the consultant as um, uh, a meta segment submitter. So they get to identify and know that this particular color is for this service. They approve it prior to proceeding on site. So we don't have discrepancy with the different installation as compared to the meta statement, which is very important. So we move now to cable tray trunkings, ladder and panel board. So in this case, we'll have um, labelings as such. For cable trays, trunkings, ladders, We'll have our labeling as such, whereby for I'll give an example whereby we have um, access control, low current, electrical power, lighting power, lighting and power circuits, emergency lighting, power cables, ELV containments, control cables, BMS containment. So in this case, like I did mention initially, it varies, it varies from different projects. So what have been designed for this project might not be used for this other project. Like we all know a project is unique and should be carried out based on the different algorithm or the different um, syntax as um, uh, placed by the different project management managers in the different project, which is very important. So in this case, we'll have different labelings for the cable tray, trunkings or cable ladder, or probably for panel boards, which will be mentioned as such. So based on the different services, we are going to put the labelings. As you can see, this is a perforated cable tray, which we have this labeling here. It can be, or it could be um, CCTV cable tray, um, or uh, public address cable tray, or power cable tray, et cetera, et cetera. We'll move now to panel boards, it will be as such. In this case, this is an MCB, which is motor control center. In this case, you see here, you see MCC stroke B1 stroke one. So in this case, you will be able to identify that this is a motor control center, which is installed in basement one and zero one, which is the first MCC that we have installed in that project. The next slide is going to be MCB, which is motor control panels. So in this case, we have MCP GF01, which is motor control panel installed in ground floor and then this is a first motor control panel. This motor control panel will be installed to control probably some pumps that are installed in the building, such as probably uh, 
submersible pumps or um, so some other different uh, motor uh, uh, controllers which are designed for a particular pump or a particular motor. We'll move now to next, which is uh, DB. This is DB GFP01. In this case, we have this DB as distribution board installed in ground floor for power circuits and 01, which is the first power circuit distribution board, which is installed in ground floor. The next will be SMDB GF01, which is sub main diffusion board installed in ground floor, which is the first SMDB. In this case of um, the DBs or the distribution board, in this part where we mentioned P, we could either put here L as well, which is distribution board ground floor for lighting circuit, the first DB for lighting circuit. So as such, we are going to be presenting the labelings. But like, like I did mention, it varies from different projects. The next is going to be cables or wires. So we'll see identifications as such. For cables, which we'll be talking of um, probably armor cables or PVC uh, three core cables. In this case, we are going to place the labeling as such. So like I did mention again, I'll still emphasize on that. It varies with the different projects. We'll place them as such and then put certain writings on them. So we get to understand this cable have been installed, which is leaving from this end going to this other end. we we'll have for data cables, which is already patched. And then we have our wires, which are installed inside our distribution board or probably our SMDBs, etc. So we'll have them placed as such, and then we have different labelings so we get to understand where it's coming from and where it's going to. This is very important. In this case, while we're carrying our maintenance, we know um, our cables or our wires have been installed, which is leading from this location going to this other location, and it's going to ease maintenance as well as installation works. We have as well this, which is connected to a lock. So I'll move to the next slide, which is switches, sockets, light fixtures, data outlets, CCTV camera sensors. In this case, we have our socket outlet. We have our fire um, sensors, uh, or, or, or call them smooth detectors. And then we have, have our lighting fixtures. We have switches, and then we have our CCTV cameras. So you see the labelings as such, which is DB1, ground floor R5. So this represents our distribution board number one, which is installed in ground floor. And then the circuit reference, which is red five, which is R5. We have a fire alarm control panel one, which is in loop one. This, that means this smooth detector is connected in loop one. We have our SD, which represents the smooth detector, 001, which is the first detector that is connected for that loop. And then we have this uh, light fixture, which is DB1, ground floor lighting. So we have our CCTV camera as well, which is ground floor IDF1. This IDF is intermediate distribution frame, number one frame, which is uh, 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 we have the D. W001. So this W here emphasize or will let us understand that it's installed on the wall. In this case, this is the first CCTV camera. And this D here will be the DOOM. This is a DOOM camera. So we have our switch, which is DB ground floor switch number one. So it varies from different projects. So based on what have been mentioned on the meta statement and submitted to the consultant, that is what we are going to be using while placing our different identification on the different equipment, which is very important. We'll take us now to QCS 2014, section 21, part 25. The table of content. We have generals. We have name plates and labels. We have wires and cable markers. We have interconnecting cables, cabling identification, we have as well underground warning tape, and then we have installation. General, provide identification on all equipment, exact e.g. control panels, FBA, controllers, raceway boxes and conductors, devices, etc. 
in accordance with BS 61346 or this other British standard we shall mention and then all latest edition of other applicable standards like I did mention. All levels shall be permanent and be machine generated. No handwriting or non-permanent levels shall be allowed. This is very important. We can place our handwriting labeling while we are doing like um, temporary labeling in the case that we, while we are still carrying out the installation works and then later, while we are submitting for inspection, now we place the permanent labelings, which will be machine generated. Prior to making any label or nameplate for the purpose of identification, submit a detailed schedule indicating nameplate size, lettering size, color, material, and actual nameplate information for engineers review and approval. This is very important, like I did mention that we are going to submit a meta statement which will have all these different identification for the different services and the different color codings and how they are going to be placed either in graft or probably we place um, different type of labelings as per the engineer's requirement, which is very important. All external labels, name place, operational and warning signs shall be provided in Arabic and English. I'll give the, in this case, we'll be talking of probably exit lights. In this case, we will have them in English and in Arabic, which is very important. So um, different guys that are coming inside that building, they get to understand that this sign is for us to evacuate or leave the premises at that particular time, which is very important. Critical devices such as disconnect switches, service feeders and branch circuit protective feeders shall be legit, legibly, legibly labeled to indicate its purpose and point of origin. The legibility, legibility distance shall not exceed less than two meters. In this case now, we'll be, just, we'll be talking of um, either we have conduits, cable tray, cable trunkings, whereby they are installed either vertically or horizontally. So in this case, the code is telling us that we should not exceed two meters away from each leveling. Identification name plates shall be provided in addition to the manufacturer's equipment name plate as required in NEMA, BS, IEC, or UL. So in this case, why we will be discussing on probably electric motors on the name plate should be as per manufacturer uh, approval or it should be as per the manufacturer uh, 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 name plate. So we are going to provide the labeling as per the manufacturer recommendation, which is very important. Warning signs and, inst and instruction labels, whether needed, shall be provided in accordance with the local regulation of Qatar General Electricity and Water Corporation and the civil defense, etc. So we have contractors shall clearly show locations and fixing arrangement of name plates and labels on draw on layout drawings. So in this case, you notice that while we are carrying out these different labelings, it should conform to the different designs that we have to carry out the different installation works on site. So I'll give an example where we have our lighting circuit, our lighting system or small power system. So in this case, all our labelings should conform based on what is written on the different um, different shop drawings, which are approved by the consultant. Name plates and labels. Provide equipment identification labels for all electrical equipment, including but not limited to switchboard, switch gears, control panels, transfer switches, disconnect, disconnect switches, transformers, generators, power factor, capacitor bands, fixed equipment, motor starters. Provided sub-classification level for all emergency power system, junction boxes and pool boxes. In this case, where we, where we have uh, our conduit installed and then we have different pool boxes. It could either be a round circular GI uh, um, box or probably um, we have um, this, the square type boxes that we use um, as concealed boxes. 
In this case, we have um, the covers. It could be the round covers that we place on our different junction box or our pool boxes. We have to provide um, identification. If we have uh, our labeling, which is red, say for example, for fire alarm systems, in this case, when we, when we are installing our circular covers for the circular boxes, we'll have to spray them as well with red colors for identification. External levels, clear perfect back and graft in black letters, in white background, in Arabic and English, with chamfer edges, fixed with stainless steel screws with nuts and flat and lock washers. washers. We'll go to locations. Provide title level for electrical distribution and all other control equipment panels. Provide function level for door mounted components. In this case, we'll be discussing of uh, probably our distribution board, some main distribution board, I could name them panel boards, where we have um, enclosure covers or doors. Every internal component identification level. Provide identification level for protective devices this is very important. In the case where we have different protective devices, it could be either MCB, um, MCCB, ACB, we have to provide different um, identification to identify the different um, uh, protective devices. Provide title level for communication equipment. Wire and cable markers. Interconnecting cabling identification. So in this interconnecting cable identification, we could either refer them to our cables or wires that are installed inside our different panel boards. Underground warning tape. Description, 100 millimeter wide plastic tape, detect, detectable type, colored yellow, with suitable warning legend, describing buried electrical lines, e.g. 0.6 slash 1 kV, or we have 11 kV, etc. I'll take us to a graphic where we have our warning tape installed. So we have our warning tape that is installed under the ground, as you can see. So we install them with an inspection prior to backfilling. There's a warning tape. So it should have different description as, as mentioned by the code. Installation. Degrees and clean, degrees, degrees and clean surfaces to receive name plates and levels so for installation purposes we have to make sure that we clean the surface whereby we want to install our different name plates or labels install name plates and labels parallel to equipment lines secure name plates to equipment front as specified secure name plates to inside to inside surface or door on label on panel board that is recessed in Finnish locations. Identify underground conduits using underground warning tapes. This is very important. Or cables as well, which are installed underground. Install one tape per strength, per trench, at 150 millimeters below finish grid. It's very important. So, this is just to give us a clear understanding on labelings and identification. So while we are carrying out our installation works, we understand what we are doing. So while we present our different installation to the consultant, we know um, our different, uh, different installation works that we've carried out conform to the requirement of the project. Like I did mention, we'll have all these different identification presented to the engineer or the consultant 
that will approve this prior for us to proceed with the different identification. It will either be on our first fix, second fix, or a third fix. Like I did mention, I did explain the different services that we have on the first fix, the second fix, and the third fix. So we should carry out the different identification labelings and the different materials that should be used for the different identification. And also, let's always make sure that we go through our different codes, QCS 2014, and to know exactly the different um, specification as mentioned on the code while we are carrying out our electrical installation work, which is very important. Till then, you're watching Makoge Enterprises.